Today we restored Rachel's headstone, who was a formerly enslaved person from our founder, John H. Roundtree of Platteville. Um, she was enslaved from around 1828 to 1841, and her death is around 1854, but today we restored her headstone to bring peace to her, essentially, and just pay respect as well for her. This is where Rachel lies, this stone with a capital R and a period. Um, for this free woman of color when she passed away in 1854, this was often um, people who had been formerly enslaved. Uh, sometimes they had just the capital letter of their first name. Uh, sometimes they didn't have a family name or their family name was the name of their enslaver. And so sometimes they even chose or their family chose not to put that on a stone. The, the understanding of chattel slavery by that time is cemented in the country. Chattel cannot consent to move themselves. Right. But right. yet they are writing this into the document. And they also say things like they desire to stay in Iowa County. Mm -hmm. No, Iowa County holds their bond. Yeah. Right? And so they are they're creating myth at the time because these are men who are very cognizant of who they are and what their place in history is. A lot of people don't know that along with uh, key historical figures like John H. Roundtree, the founder of Platteville, he founded Platteville as a lead miner and lead mine owner here in 1827. Uh, a lot of people don't know that he also uh, enslaved illegally three African Americans. Um, one of those people was named Rachel, um, who he held as a slave in the 1830s and 1840s, freeing her in about 1841. Uh, and two other of those people uh, were an African-American woman named Maria, a mother, with her son Felix, uh, who was 19 months, uh, 18 months old when he purchased them illegally in Galena, Illinois, May 20th, 1830, uh, for $330. There would be a stone like this with the initials of the person married. So what we're doing at the cemetery is Rachel uh, was freed by Roundtree in the early 1840s, but she continued to live with and work for the Roundtree family until her death in the early 1850s. That approximate date is circa 1854. And so her tombstone is here in the Roundtree family burial plot, uh, where she has literally continued to be surrounded by Roundtrees even in death. And her stone was inadvertently broken uh, about three to five years ago. And my students uh, in History of Wisconsin, History 3320, this summer we have researched Rachel, Maria, Felix, and other key African-American figures of Grant County and the Driftless region of Wisconsin this summer. And today we have worked with community volunteers and headstone restoration specialists uh, from the Mineral Point Old City Cemetery Project to repair Rachel's 1850s stone. And what's really interesting here is while we do have some primary documents that show uh, Rachel, um, her headstone is actually one of the few documents that proclaim that she was Rachel, that she lived, worked, uh, and died in Platteville, and that she was enslaved illegally here.